Hey guys, welcome back to The TechSmith. We're down here in our studio again with Palau today, taking a look at some new products that we got in to uh, work on getting this video studio finished. What do you think of all these uh, gadgets and gizmos here? I'm ready to open some of this stuff up. Let's see what we got see going we got. on from Markitech. We got something from a company called uh, RTI over here. You ever heard of uh, RTI, Bilal? Never heard of it in my life. Oh, they make uh, different types of like automation systems and whatnot that we can end up using inside of the studio to control our televisions and uh, make some awesome uh, electronic stuff happen. So that's one of the things we're going to be taking a look at first is what you know it means when it says it's under control. Let's actually get it in the shot so they can see what I'm talking about. There you go. So RTI is Remote Technologies Incorporated, and they specialize in making it so we don't actually have to have like 16 different remotes to control all of our different devices. So that's one of the pieces. Then we've got the different accessories that go with it. This is an expansion module that goes in the other rooms we'll talk a little bit more about, and then some accessories that we're gonna end up hooking into it to uh, control it and you know, show us like different status stuff. So we're gonna be really getting into this over the next few series. We're gonna be getting into programming it and wiring it, hooking up into everything. Okay. And then we got a mystery box to get into in a second. We're gonna see what we got here from Architect. Hopefully they sent us something good. Yeah and uh, some tools basically for doing our uh, video termination and cabling. So let's see, did that actually switch over? It did, there we go. We're experimenting with uh, controlling the video switcher from here in the podcast room. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've got some cable stripping tools that we're gonna use mm -hmm. to actually terminate our video cables. So let's hop on into the uh, first RTI box here and see what's inside it. What would you say? It seems kind of big, doesn't it? So, PlayStation 3. PlayStation 3, wow, oh, old school. You know, we're still trying to get the PlayStation 5 over here, but you know. This is the uh, XP6S Advanced Control Processor. So this is actually the brains of the operation that all of these different things are gonna connect to and talk to. I knew that, I was close. Yeah, close, close. enough, close enough. Mm -hmm. Around the corner. You've been getting into some video editing lately. You think you wanna mess around with doing some programming uh, and whatnot? You gonna, uh, you we know, learn, learn how to. We ain't gonna say too much on tape. <laughs> we on tape, we on a we, we are, we are. You don't get too much into that. So inside the box in this guy, we've got the actual control processor unit. So it's like a little computer device, basically. Okay. So you can see here, we've got like the different uh, connection ports, you know, some Ooh, network yeah, yeah. hookups and everything, your little screw down terminals for your infrared and relays, and then uh, some almost looking like, you know, he headphone ports, but they're actually for your IR and serial control. So this is the brains of the operation that all the different things are going to connect into. Mm -hmm. And then you open it up and you can you know, control your different uh, gains and whatnot and gives you your status lights and then that's how you hook it up into the computer. So the main little box, go ahead and put that up here for now until we get mm -hmm. back to it later on. Right. And then it looks like, what do you think those are? Yeah. Take like a, a look. Mount of What's going on here? So that's the nice thing about this little processor. So if we had, say, like an equipment rack that was underneath the table here, but you know, you can either tabletop it, yeah, mount it. Oh yeah, exactly. So I mean, you could you put this basically like you know on the side here, right? So you got the ears on either side, and then you end up basically being able to uh, rack mount it in. So if you hand me the other set of uh, the ears there, yeah, I'll show you what it looks like. Let's get this shit popping. Yeah. All right, there we go. Uh -huh. So basically we throw it in like that and then this is gonna fit inside of a uh, stand uh, standard 19 inch depth, uh, you know, uh -huh. equipment rack. Right. The other thing, right. throwing okay. shit now, now, now we're getting excited. Uh -uh. We got the little four rubber feet on the bottom of it. So that uh -huh. way you could just, you know, sit it on your AV rack or on a shelf somewhere. But if you're gonna rack mount it, you go ahead and just unscrew these four feet and then it just sits inside of one rack unit of space and then it can go with your amplifiers and all your other stuff. So that's what we'll end up doing. We're gonna rack mount it inside of our equipment closet. Sound like a plan. Keep it out of the way. Sound like a plan, Let's see, so what else we got inside of the box of gizmos and gadgets? Got a bunch of these little, so as you see here, actually we had one of these before from uh, some of the other installs we did, but these are your little adapter. So basically it's uh, what's called a DB9 connector here on the, uh, 
back end, and that's for serial communication. So that's one of the protocols that you can talk to your electronics and devices. It hooks up to you know some older TVs and stuff like that. Okay. So it converts it to the DB9 uh, mm -hmm. serial connector to the Ethernet that actually plugs into the control port. Okay, RTI. RTI, they got it all. They got all the little port hookups. So let me give you a close-up shot just so you can RTI. see what we're talking about. Shout there. out to RTI, man. Yeah, they didn't even sponsor yeah. this section, so that's, that's why the logo ain't up on the screen today. There you go. But uh, so basically, well, as we can get it up there, we can get it up there. Just give us a call. You call call Bilal. Nice yeah. saying. Just, just, just call us though. <laughs> call our uh, advertising. We we'll get you on it. So we got two RS two thirty two ports right on the back here that look like a standard network port, and that's what's going to plug into you know this adapter here. So some of your older devices would have that DB nine connector, right? And then you would use a standard Ethernet cable to connect between the two of them. So mm -hmm. well, you know, we'll show more about what that is down the road, but just to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're getting to the end of the box of goodies in this guy. Uh-oh. That's it? I assume that this is the I'm power deck. Just keep just getting, well, I mean, we still got, we got market tech, we got a few pieces that we're gonna talk about. Yeah, hey, don't worry, there's still plenty of boxes oh, to open. I ain't going out like that. <laughs> Juiced up. There you go. All right, so we've got our uh, AC 12 volt adapter. I'm going mm. to guess and say, yeah, 12 volt, uh, 12 volts at uh, one amp. So that's what's going to go Ooh. ahead and power this guy a whole one amp of power. Ooh. So that's actually an important thing to know though, because this you know device here, it's got all these output ports that you can connect some stuff to and send different signals to. But there's only an amp worth of power, so you want to make sure that when you are connecting your devices and whatnot, that you're within the actual you know tolerable allowances you don't want to be cooking you know power supplies you know, like why isn't stuff working there we go so in this case inside of the box we've got our u.s power connector uh, or you know our dc adapter with our u.s power connector and then it's also got some stuff for some other countries you know just in case you're in does it say on it I can never tell just by looking at it, but you know, if you're in Australia, the UK, uh, and uh, you know, some other country, China, I don't know. You got your three little uh, adapters for other countries. It's a universal power supply. In our case, though, we're in the old USA. But don't throw it away. You know, we might take. A yeah, trip. we might go on a trip. I just uh, we just both got it. our passports. So, yeah. right in. Blue. Where are we going? Somebody's gonna ask us. I really hope we get to go on some fun, you know, fun travel somewhere, do some automation stuff. It would be fun. Let's see, so that was it. We got screws, that was the screws for the rack here. So that's in that box, other than the fact that you get the little quick start guide. Yeah, read that's up good. on it. That's uh, oh, some light yeah. reading. Oh, it's yeah. under control. Let me see this. Let me see this. Let me see this. Oh, and then an important notice. Please verify that you have the most recent software and firmware for this product. Visit the dealer website. So an important thing to note is you do have to be an RTI dealer in order to purchase and install this stuff. In this case, we are at C47 Systems. We do automation and integration systems. So RTI. Yeah, it's right. under control. We got this. So continuing on in the RTI theme, this is an expansion module. So again, this is going to sit somewhere inside of like one of our you know server cabinets. But you know, not everything, especially in our case where we're in a big building, we've got you know other buildings that got televisions and stuff, and there's distances that you can only run the wiring for so long, right? This is a nice setup in here. Yeah, it's a yeah, nice little set. podcast studio. This is a nice setup. Man. If they check out some of our previous videos, they could see what it looks like before it was even walls. Start to start to you know finish nuts and bolts. This product was actually opened. It was one of our uh, testing products that we were using before, so it's a little bit dinged up. Mm. But it's the little expansion module, the PCM4, and we would end up putting this inside of the other uh, IT build, uh, you know, the IDFs, the other closets in the plaza that have televisions and whatnot connected into them. And then this kind of expands over the data network, our ability to control serial devices and all that kind of stuff. Right, right. So it basically just helps as a, uh, in this case, this is the port control module, which is PCM stands for. And this comes with four of your uh, 3.5 uh, inch you know, headphone type connections. That's for your serial and RS-232, your mm. ethernet port, a 12 volt trigger output, and then your USB for programming. Oh, so yeah. we're uh -huh. gonna show you how those all end up connecting together. Uh -huh. yeah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little bit of both. And then naturally another US power adapter from before. Mm. And then these didn't come with it. These are just actually some extra IR blasters that go on the uh, TVs. 
So that's what you actually would end up uh, outputting your infrared control like your remote would simulate, you know. So we'll talk a little bit about that more in depth in future videos. Mm -hmm. And then some type of pads that are also unrelated. That's what happens when we unbox the used product on the... Uh... There we go. But those are going to talk to each other. And last but not least in the RTI section, we're going to quickly just kind of talk about how we're going to talk to all these different devices and control them. So again, the RTI control system is something that uh, you're able to use your smartphone, you're able to mm -hmm. hit a push button. So what do you think we should do with this guy? I have an idea that I think I'm going to set that up for, is, you know, especially being that we're an entertainment production studio. All right, I think it's going, to, it's going to go to the soft serve machine, and every time you hit that, soft serve just starts coming out everywhere. I like I'm a that. big fan of ice cream, like Nickelodeon, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, GAC and all that, and the slime time or whatever. I think that's what we should do. Maybe we get a whole lot of five dollar bills just come just come out, out of it, out of nowhere. Exactly. You know, I mean that's <laughs> five dollars just start shooting out. I mean, I wish we had that kind of budget. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> that's the nice thing, though. The thing with this is it's all customizable. So uh, what I think I'm going to start with it is I'm going to every time you hit the button for emergency mode, it's going to go into a little party mode. So it'll end up putting you know some type of uh, dance show that C47 produced on all the TVs. We'll have some lights going, maybe some fog start shooting out. And then as soon as you uh, go ahead and like reset it, everything's back to normal. It's a nine to five business and nobody's the wiser. So it's going to be a cool little uh, fun gag that you can go ahead and hit that emergency stop. And uh, we'll have to put a warning that it's not actually an emergency stop in case uh, somebody gets injured. But you know, we're going to basically automate some of the fun stuff. And then what we could do is this is a little 12 volt light that basically when it gets activated, you know, it would turn on. So it could be like a status light maybe. So these are just like some quick options as far as what we can use these uh, input and output controls on the RTI for. The other things is it's going to be used to control all of our televisions and turn them on and off and change the input. So when people come into the podcast room, they can just hit a button and then they're ready to go. You think it's going to make it easier instead of the 10,000 remotes we got everywhere? Uh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's yeah. what I like to hear. So yeah. I think it'll be good. You know, we'll get, you know, get it uh, put together, hooked up. It's going to be a lot of programming, a little bit of swearing, and there's a lot of wiring that's going to still be connected all together. But that's what we spent two years putting together is all that wiring. So let's put it to some use. And in order to do that, we got some new tools. Feel like 20 years. 20 oh, years. Mm. Hey, so we've got the Klein Tools VDV211-100. What do you think this guy is? Mm, look like some type of expensive tool. Expensive tool. Uh, well, uh, 3328 according to the price sticker. Mm. So, uh, you know, not too bad, but yeah, tools are expensive. This guy is actually the extended reach coax crimper. Mm. Which is interesting because it's not actually a coax crimper, it's a coax compressor. So mm, modern, day, <laughs> modern day connections, when you hook up, say, cable television, security cameras, uh, in our case, you know, BNC and stuff like that, uh, which is the you know, video connector that we're using for all of our cameras, you need to terminate it. And so the connector that you're terminating needs to be compressed onto the cable. Let's go ahead and see if I can get this open without cutting my hand open. So in this case, basically Ooh. what you would do is you would put the uh, connector into the end of this tool here, and we don't have any for this tool with us right here and now, but again, you know, we'll be definitely using it in the future to terminate some of our cable connectors. But you put the end inside of that, and then you use this tool to strip the end of the cable, mm -hmm. and then you compress it. So basically it squeezes it and pushes it into the connector and does a full 360 degree compression around it. Actually, we're going to do a comparison too because... What? 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 That's a whole lot of shit. A whole lot of technical stuff in Damn. 30 seconds. Hey, Man, you know. You can't just use the regular John. Just, <laughs> just well, that's what, the, the, that's what this does. This does a little bit, you know. We've got a few different things. So we're going to be uh, showing people the differences and, you know, termination this, tools. This, this, oh, you got to stick that and do that. Yeah, you know, it's supposed to help make it a little bit easier, like this tool here. This is going to strip the cable for us. Wow, I'm shooting a lot of plastic all over the place. I do wish I had real scissors for opening this. I didn't grab the real scissors though. This thing ain't got no weight on it. It's nice and light. 
Oh yeah, no, it's definitely one of the lighter tools that I've used, and that's a good thing when you're terminating a bunch of them, especially up in the air. You don't want to be carrying anything too heavily crazy. So there you go. So that's your basic cable stripper. Whoops, start. So that's the VDV100-801-. SEN. And actually, surprisingly, I would have figured that would have been a lot cheaper comparative. What do we say? This was 33, uh, 28. And this is a, a solid metal tool overall, you know, right? It's made out of metal. That's all plastic. That was $31.38. So not much of a savings. Mm. So basically together we're in $60, but with this set you have what you need to terminate most of your regular cable TV connections and uh, BNC for camera connections and security. So uh, these both are specifically for coax. Uh, well actually this one does both coax and data because it's just mm -hmm. the jacket stripper, but this is specifically just for coax cable. And what is coax cable? We'll get into more of that in a future video. Mm -hmm. We only got so much time for the uh, unsponsored mm -hmm. videos. They thought we, they thought they were about to hear some of that. This not ain't the today. educational video. Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> next time, next time. Next time. Here on C47 TV. Next time. So, this is going to help us connect all of our video cable, essentially. This is our control system that's going to control all the video. And we'll just go ahead and quickly open up this guy. This is the RTI IR control or IR receiver and programmer. So basically, this guy we hook into the computer, we shoot our remote into it, and it allows us to pick up the different IR codes that the remote is sending out. So we can customize and uh, do all of our own RTI drivers. But this is an important device to have as an installer because you have TVs from Roku and Sennheiser, or not Sennheiser, Hitachi and Sony, and you know, just there's 10,000 different you know, TV manufacturers and devices and all different things. So you want a device that you can actually learn the remote codes, and that's what this is going to allow us to do. So any weird device that we've got, we basically point the remote at it, and it hooks up to the computer and learns the IR codes. Mess around with that a little bit more. And that completes the introduction to our automation system. Hmm. Wasn't that exciting? That was, that was, that was beautiful. I think they're going to really enjoy listening to the one hour long videos where we actually get into the programming and connecting. So what's going on with that? John? This guy here is for even more wiring stuff. So Markertech is a broadcast supply, spe or I guess Markertech is the broadcast supply specialists. So they are, sir. That's what everyone, everyone you know, RTI that. says it's in control. These guys say they specialize in broadcast. So basically, Markertech, they sell any type of video and audio and tech stuff related to the broadcast industry. You need some wires, you need some connectors. Everybody got a name nowadays. Everyone's doing it all. Whoop. Now I'm just shooting stuff at you. I should have blew my heart out. <laughs> there it is. You know, hey, it is still a construction site. So, inside this box. Hey, ain't nothing but trash. Oh, there oh, we go. You know shit. We got some connectors and gizmos and gadgets. Ah. There we go. I got some shrink wrap stuff right ah, there. And now we get into the good shit. Yeah, this entire box is pretty pricey. All that in a little tiny box. Dang. So basically what we've got inside of this uh, shrink wrap uh, container here is our BNC terminations. Mm -hmm. So these guys are going to go inside of the wall plates that we have throughout the studio and then allow ah. us to be able to connect in our cameras and uh, video monitors mm. without having wires dangling out of the wall as we currently do. So these little guys are the uh, Nutrix D-Style. BNC connectors, mm -hmm. and it is literally just a pass-through connector. So you have a terminated cable on both ends. One end is the from the wall, and then that end is out in the field mm -hmm. that you can hook your camera into. So we have something like, I think, 20 of those to install. I got in the screws mm. last week, so we can finally start wrapping those up. Okay. Well, However, when you're going in, when you putting them in? I mean, you know, hey, <laughs> what, what, what are we at? It's 8 o'clock now, 8 p.m., so that might be the 1, 1 a.m. channel, you know? It never That's stops at C47 <laughs> Studio. We're nice. always going. <laughs> So this is only part of the uh, equation though. Again, this is the part that's gonna go in the wall, but we need to terminate our cable in some fashion that is a broadcast standard. 
So, you know, your standard cable television, that's just getting, you know, certain frequencies for uh, high def channels and whatnot. However, when it comes to the broadcasting standard, mm -hmm. when you're connecting cameras and stuff, you need what's called a, a BNC style. And then this is for SDI cabling. So serial digital interface is what that is. But we yeah. use SDI cabling to connect all of our cameras and television equipment. And then you have to use a certain type of connector that it terminates with. And that in itself is a whole process. As you can see, we've got the top piece here is the pins. It's a small process. It a small ain't process. All right. Well, you got to strip process. the cable. So you got to put the pin center pin on it. Small little. Process. You got to do the steps, mm -hmm. and you don't want to forget. You don't want to do it out because then, say you put the pin on and you cr try to put crimp that on. Well, you forgot to put that on. Now you got to redo the whole damn connector. You know. Oh, so, you even put this yeah, on. if you skip one step, you get screwed over, and it's like, whoo. Hate to be that guy. Yeah, it's labor intensive. And these are $13 a connector. Mm. So, yeah, pretty pricey. I think the ones you got over there are for the uh, mini SDI cable. Mm. And then these are for the full size SDI cable. See? Mini so. bar. Yep, yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, we're going to be spending a lot of hours terminating these cables. And in order to terminate those cables, what's, you know, what is it? Uh, it is a TS100U. What is the TS100U? Do you know what it is? TS100U. This is another cable uh, stripper. We said this one was $32, right? This is just your standard cable television cable stripper. This guy is a broadcast cable stripper. This is $100. Mm. So mm. just because you're mm. in the broadcast mm. world, oh, higher no, precision. Look at that. It comes with a calibration tool. That's how you know, uh, you know you're getting serious. They want you to do some math and calibrate some stuff or something you know look at that a little canary that's who makes it so this is the canary ts 100 c slash e slash u coaxial cable stripper let's call it a stripper man <laughs> hey take all that stuff. that's all the important stuff i guess and you can see this one's got a little bit more bells and whistles it's got instruction sheet on it it's nice and shiny though. I mean, like both the, uh, I'd say both the, the label here and the ruler are, you know, pretty shiny, so. So we actually had the previous version of this, which was the TS100. Like that for a light up and uh, it's you know, gonna start flashing. It could, shit. it's got some gizmos and that gadgets. Like, oh, it's got a rubber band. I was like, why won't it open? It looked like it moved, but it just go forward by itself. <laughs> it would be nice if it was fully automated. Nice little electric one that it does it for you. Uh, there we go. Get the little cable wrap go. off of it. I mean, let it breathe. And then that's how you open it. So we got this little wheel that we can open it fully so you can see what's inside. There we go. Mm -hmm. So it's got all those little uh, metal teeth and everything right there. That's going to strip the different parts of the cable. Mm -hmm. So basically you need like a section that's just the uh, bare metal core. And then you got the dielectric white stuff. And then you got shielding. So you got all these different wheels that got to cut at different depths. And then you can rotate this depending on the type of cable and the thickness of it. These are all different presets for it. It gets very complicated. There's even a bunch of little Allen keys that you can adjust inside of there to fine tune it. Mm. So it's, uh, you know, again, it's a more broadcast, uh, high quality compression, uh, you know, so this is going to do with these ends. This is what's called a crimp connection. And then the other tool here that does a compression mm -hmm. connection. So we're going to show you the difference between a crimp and a, con a compression. Mm. And then there's a lot of debate in the industry as to which one specifically is better. So. That's just some of the quick things that we uh, had to unbox today, just to guy, give you guys a quick update as to where we are as we now are into the finished wiring phases. And uh, we get geared up for our 2022 schedule of content. You can check us out on the C47.tv app on Roku and C47.tv. Mm -hmm. And I hear you got some shows coming up soon, too, that they can uh, uh, check you know, out. You got legit talk coming legit up. Talk, legit you got talk a little coming bit. Soon. I can't give you everything. You <laughs> Not all the details. We got a lot coming up. Up though, huh, stay tuned. Right now, we gotta pack all this shit up. Cause ah, no, that's what the interns are for. Yeah. The interns okay. are us, but you know, so yeah, yeah, we gotta pack it up. But we got a few boxes to dispose of now. But I'm just excited to get them open, so we can actually start installing them instead of having them sitting here waiting to be yeah, opened. So right. we made some good. progress today. You guys yeah. check it out in the future. Come back and see us on C47 TV. And uh, I'm Edric and Lowski. Lowski, we're out of here. We'll see you later.